morning. Good morning again. Welcome to you all. We're going to start this day's journey of going through Second Kings 17, chapter 17, verses 7 through 20. But there's a lot of background and stuff in this lesson today that we went through. And again, it's there's still the merry-go-round of of king, the carousel, I should say, <clears throat> of death and destruction to gain power is about to come to an end for the northern kingdom that we're going to read about today because they God is finally going to turn them over to their own retribute and jealousy and greed and lust and pride. So as we've seen throughout, he kept warning over and over, sending his prophets, his judges, his seers. But our good people, they just did not <clears throat> want to hear what God was talking about. And so really it says that God holds all people <clears throat> accountable for their sins. So that's one of the things that we got to hold really, really true. We got to realize that not my mom, not my dad, not my wife, not my sister, not my neighbor. <clears throat> I'm responsible and accountable for what I do to God, and I will answer for that. And so... I look at this question, says, what kind of warning system are common today in our homes, cars, community, or nation? And then name a few. And then why do people ignore warnings? <clears throat> Let's start off with someone answer, going over that. Well, well. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Yes. Things in the home would be smoke detectors, fire alarm, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide detectors, water alarms, and burglar alarms. And then in cars, we have seat belts, and we have a bell to let us know that the door is open or the trunk is open, gas gauge is low, tire pressure. Blind spots and drifting. In the nation, we have tornado sirens, ambulances, fire and police sirens. And then, um, people may ignore warnings out of not believing anything can or will happen to them. <laughs> okay, very good. Now, let's, trick, let's flip this a little bit. What in our spiritual Christian life, religious life, are some of the common warning systems that we might receive when we're getting off of the track of doing what we should be doing in the light of God's word? Well, why rather than we, why do we ignore that? Well, first of all, we have to realize that our warning signal is the Holy Spirit. Now, when we get the warning through the word or through his presence, or someone else, and we choose to ignore it, then we stepped over into that line of, of willful, willful disobedience. <clears throat> mm. Okay, willful disobedience. We step over that line. Yes. So for the Christ, Christian, the only the, the the warning signal is the Holy Spirit. That's who's supposed to teach us, direct us, and guide us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we covered those. So now we're going to look at understanding the text here. And uh, basically, if you read chapter 17 all the way through, you're going to see how we're going to see usually, again, you know, the book is full with drama and different things. First, we look off in the first couple of verses. They describe this new king of Israel, Hosha. 
Shia, <clears throat> and he reigned nine years. He did evil, and but he became subservient to the Assyrians by giving them bribes and everything. And, you know, him doing that, God is finally tired of all this stuff all the way back from Jeroboam, Rehoboam, you know, the, ever since the split of the kingdoms. Now he's just like, okay, I've warned you over and over and over, you know, and you're going to see this again, that, you know, you keep sinning, you know, and I've shown you and led you even through Egypt, how I gave you another land that was full of idolatry and sinful people, but you were my people. I brought you over, but you still won't listen. You're still setting up these idols. You're still doing all these things. So finally, he just said, okay, enough is enough. So he hands them on over the northern kingdom. He takes 10 of those tribes, and he takes them over and abandon them and take them to foreign lands. And not only that, he brings foreigners in to live in their land. Mm. And so, again, I think the whole thing of this whole thing is God had given them direction, covenants, statues, and warnings. But... As we get into this lesson, we're going to see what, we, what they did with those. So on the question on page 101 is, it says, read 2 Kings 17, 7 through 20 in your Bible. What, sins, what sin was constant struggle in Israel? Why do you think this particular sin was such a lure for his people? What sin? I think the uh, the one sin is <clears throat> serving idol gods, and that goes all the way back to uh, to Solomon. He came to Solomon twice and explained to him what would happen if he continued to serve these idol gods. He told him the kingdom would be split. He also told him that the kingdom would be given to a stranger. So, all this goes all the way back to uh, First Kings, not Second Kings, First Kings 11, 9 through 11, where God explains all of this to him. So that was the first real warning that he had, but the patience that God had to this point was 208 year, uh, years. Now, I'm thinking when I read all of this, if 208 years has passed and each generation, as you said last week, did not get rid of the idol worship, that's about uh, 20 kings about 19 kings or something like that and nobody got rid of the idol worship well God is tired of this he's angry now and uh, chapter 17 gets rid of the uh, gets rid of the northern kingdom here the Assyrians takes it over very good I think you hit it right there in the kings it goes all the way back to first king but even so, all the way back to Moses in Deuteronomy, he was warning his people, even when Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, you know, he had to break them up because they were worshiping, and God had already warned them, hey, don't have no other God before me. That's way back in Deuteronomy, you know, mm -hmm. and don't worship and don't bow down to idols. We're going to cover all that in our lesson as we go through, but... Uh, that's very good that in the kings they had over 200 years of all these wicked people underneath the kingship you know before that God was taking care of them but they still wasn't happy with God taking care of them they demanded a king like all the nations around them see they started off right there wanting uh, 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 to be like other people around him and he said hey don't be like other people around you you know mm -hmm. follow me do my will so that's very good I think 
we'll go on to the first section of exploring the text. And we're going to read the warning. And that's going to be in 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 7 through 13. Warning. Are you going to answer the second part of the question? Good morning. Why did people, why do people think this particular sin was such a lure for the people? Right. Why do you think? Yes. Why do you think, me, myself, or are you going to answer it? Well, the question is, why do you think this particular sin was such a lure for the people? Mm -hmm. Yes, what I said is the on the old age and ongoing sin of pride, self advertisement where you want to promote yourself as powerful or important. Um, and so when we do that, creating our own religion, this promotes selfishness. And in Exodus 20, uh, verses 1 through 17, the first... Uh, Four, okay. The first four uh, commandments denote a relationship with God. And so violation of that, when you're promoting yourself, you have elevated yourself above God, which is sinful because he said you should have no other gods before me. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. All right, that's a reply to the first half of the questions. All right, Brother Betts, I guess we're going to read now the warning. Warn, 2 Kings 17, 7 through 13. This disaster happened because the people of Israel sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and because they worship other gods, they live according to the customs of the nation that the Lord had dispossessed before the Israelites according to what the kings of Israel did. The Israelites secretly did things against the Lord their God that were not right. They built high places in all their towns from Watchtower to Fortified City. They set up for themselves sacred pillars and natural poles on every high hill and under every grown tree, green tree rather. They burned incense there on all the high places, just like the nations that the Lord had driven out before them had done. They did evil things, angering the Lord. They served idols, although the Lord had told them, you must not do this. Still, the Lord warned Israel and Judah through every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commands and statutes according to the whole law I commanded your ancestors and sent to you through my servants, the prophets. Thank you, Brother Betts, for reading first. Kings, I mean, Second Kings, chapter seventeen, verses seven through thirteen. Warn and Lord add a blessing to the hearing, doing, and the reading of His word. Just like it was said earlier, that pride, and I'm going to say lust for self-promotion. All this stuff happened because you look at it. Disaster happened because they sinned. What was their sin? They looked at what everybody else wanted, lusting after that, and then they figured, hey, I'm going to do things my way, <laughs> you know. And so they are in this situation, even though they've warned, even though they've seen what God can do for them, uh, all these things. And so I think that they... The people of Israel sinned by worshiping the idols of pagans who lived in the promised land and it is neighbor's area, in its neighboring areas. 
in grace, God warned them through prophets to turn from their sins and follow him. Mm. So he did all the things God did from the beginning of time with his mercy and his grace. He warns, 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 give them rods, give them statutes, and the people, through their pride, through their lust, they ignore him. And then, if you read the uh, key doctrine on page 103, to God we owe the highest love, reverence, and obedience. To God we owe. God don't owe us anything. (laughs) We owe him just for this day for this moment that we're here together, just to start us all off. So all these high places, all these burning of incense, serving idols, this was all bribing, you know, all this was what? Sin against the Lord, Mm. you know, and over and over for 200 years, Israel and Judah had been warned, and now he had sent prophets, seers, but nobody, everybody wanted to do things what they wanted to do. So then the results are we going to see in a little bit later, but the question on page 104 says, twice, the text mentioned that the Lord had driven out the people who had lived in this land before, verses 8 and 11. Why might the children of Israel think they would be treated different? And wouldn't be run out of the land. I think they Good morning. Were... Good morning. Yeah. Well, uh, as was said before, this uh, this is Sis Rowena Grimes here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> uh, they were uh, self-serving. They wanted to control their own destiny. They were, uh, they felt that they were God special, they said they were God special people, so Amen. they were privileged, Amen. as we mm. in some situations today. Mm. And uh, also, uh, they're uh, uh, looking, and, and God warned them, you know, not to conform to the other people around them, but their, their attitude. Uh, cause uh, their downfall also. However, there's one other thing I noticed that, you know, the kings who are the leaders were disobedient. And um, so they uh, could not uh, uh, properly rule the people because they wanted uh, uh, control. They wanted uh, uh, to uh, make alliances with heathen nations, and many of them encourage idolatry. Mm. And the Mm. other sad part about it was that the priest and uh, and the others and the uh, uh, people uh, are... one uh, said about the even the head of the households and all, they they didn't have any responsibility. They didn't stand up against the evil. Mm. Okay. And so you see, and like you said, they're going to um, run the people out of the land. Like you said, they felt, felt special, privileged, you know, and then they also... Uh, perverted the word of God in order to, I would say, uh, well, I'm looking at today's thing as believers today, you know, in this same situation, you know, uh, 
believers might think that they might be treated a little different than the rest of the folks in the world, you know, because I'm following God, I'm doing God's work. And then I think a lot of times they get this feeling they were privileged or special, and then they have this Bible, and you know it said if you read the Bible, you can take little pieces here and there and build up all kind of any kind of religious and beliefs that you want, Mm -hmm. you know? You know, and so that's why a lot of times, but it says don't change one while or tittle in this word, live the whole word the way it's supposed to be done. And Mm -hmm. so I think we as people today have to understand that this Bible, a lot of folks say we're under grace. Now, we don't even have to look at the Old Testament. We just, everything under grace. But this is our instruction book. And if we can use these examples so we don't go down the same path, Mm -hmm. because I think even though we're under grace, we still have the same spirit, right? We still have the same physical body, the same makeup, and we still have the same thoughts. Solomon say there's nothing new under the sun, you know. We're just different people doing it. And so I think someone else want to touch on this question? Uh, yeah, uh, I do. Um, Ms. Ms. Grimes mentioned that the king's sort of encouraged this behavior, and I also think they were some of the main people that not only encouraged, but they also indulged, uh, because so goes the head, so goes the tail. She also said that there were prophets sent, and there were. Uh, we kind of had a little fun with this last right. night. In the northern kingdom, uh, you had... Uh, Jonah, you had Amos, Hosea, Elijah, Elisha, and they didn't even write. Those two didn't even write. The southern kingdom, you had uh, Obadiah, Joel, Isaiah, Micah, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, and, uh, and Jeremiah. These were people that God sent. But, like Ms. Brian said, these people were not king. They didn't make the rules. And if they, they started talking too loud with the wrong message, they lost their heads. So, so goes the head, so goes the tail. That's a very good point there because they were not making decisions within the kingdom. Okay. Very good. Yeah, the head leads, and everybody follow. But then also we're looking at uh, God had already. We looked back last time when the uh, God put folks in the place. If you are not doing your job, if you're not fulfilling your duties, God puts other folks, moved these Israelites out, and brought other folk in. We're going to get to that section right now when we look underneath uh, the words where it says rejected. Unless uh, uh, brother we, uh, yeah, we'll get one more somebody that, else to make another comment yeah. on this. Uh, I wanted to um, say today uh, some of the things that uh, are culturally accepted. Okay. Uh, for one thing uh, and right in our own community, we have psychics, we have signs up everywhere, and people still use these uh, psychics and these mediums and fortune tellers. Mm. Uh, that's the next question. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we're going to cover them about that a little bit later on at, when we close closing oh. out. they talking I'm, about the... Okay, I'm sorry. Ahead. I'm ahead of myself. Yeah, because like... Uh, yeah, they're um, actually, oh, I'm ahead. I'm... he's saying these prophets and seers, he's not talking about the psychics right now. He's talking about prophets as seers, you know, like, uh, for instance, uh, uh, yeah. what's his name? Daniel could understand the writing on right. the wall. He was a seer. You know, Joseph, he was a seer. You know, he wasn't necessary. I don't think they ever said Joseph was a prophet, but he could see what was uh-huh. The, what what was the plan for Egypt? And so that's when he's saying not the psychics. We're going to get with them a little bit later on. 
Oh yeah, no, I I went ahead of my I went ahead <laughs> of the. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's easy to do because you know what? This whole subject of God judges is back and forth over and over the same old thing. He keeps telling us the same old thing. Be strong. Be a good courage. I'm with you. I won't leave you. I'm giving you warnings. I'm giving you statutes. Follow my lead. And he repeats this over and over and over and over. It's like, you remember when you were young and you got your first record and then you would put that newest record, just the number one hit label, and you put it on your phonograph or your turntable, and you put that thing down, and you had that repeat arm, they go over and come back. You just turn that thing on and let it play all day long, over and over and over. And God was over and over telling these people, be strong, be a courage, don't be like these, don't follow these idols. Go ahead, follow me. I'm giving you a plan. If you don't, and then he gave them the warning, too. If you don't, this is what's going to happen. But guess what? They let that arm go over that record and start over. That's the newest pop hit. I got to hear this, you know. <laughs> but anyway, this is what God was doing. He was like, hey, I should be your pop hit. I should be the one that you're listening to over and over. And you should be following. I'm giving you the roadmap. I'm giving you everything you need. And does he do that in our life today? Are we like that today? Are we getting God's word? Are we in Sunday school? Are we in uh, Bible study? Are we in prayer meeting? And we're getting God's word and we're reading it and we can quote those scriptures. I'm marvelously and wonderfully made. You know, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. You know, and then we listen to a good sermon on Sunday and then get in the parking lot and somebody get a little too close to our car. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> These are just things that, like, we're looking at the people of the Bible here, but let's, let's keep it real now. These same things are happening right here today in our life in U.S. of A. And all over um, the world, actually. <laughs> so one other thing I, I thought of uh, in, in this uh, about why the children uh, thought they were treated differently and today. Uh, in many of uh, uh, the body of Christ, uh, in the church, uh, want to be treated. Some people want to, to feel so special and want to want to be treated differently. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody else. And they also, I think, want to be recognized. You know. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and seen. You know. And I think that's all because of performance-based, you know. If I do A, B, and C, you know, workspace, you know, you know, it's uh, like all these different things. You have to realize it's all grace. So, but anyway, yeah. we're going to move on to the next section with rejected. Deacon, that's rejected. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> well, King 17, 14 through... Second Kings 17, 14 through 17. But they would not listen. And said, they became often like their ancestors who did not believe the Lord their God. They rejected his statute and his covenant he had made with their ancestors and the warnings he had given them. They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. Mm. Surrounding nations, the Lord had commanded them not to imitate. They abandoned all the commands of the Lord their God. They made cast images for themselves, two calves and an Asherah pole. They bowed in worship to all the stars in the sky and served Baal. They sacrificed their sons and daughters in the fire and practiced divination and interpreted omens. They devoted themselves to do what was evil in the Lord's sight and angered him. All right. Thank you, Deacon Betts, for reading Rejected underneath 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 14 through 17. Lord, add a blessing to the hearing, doing, and the reading of this word. And so we see here that the people, I guess the title just gives you everything. They rejected. Mm hmm 
They reject it. Mm. And then, I mean, you know, we also, this we could also we could also call that disobedience in, in right. one big word. Yes, disobedient, rejected. Yep, and then they were, they did evil. You know, they just, you know. And let's talk about right here. They rejected his statutes. Now let's get that straight. Then they rejected his covenant. Let's get that straight. And they also rejected his warning. We're going to go into a little bit later about this, but his statutes, let's say, say for folks, somebody might not know his statutes. There was like his directions and procedures on how to do certain things. Like one of the things he had said, thou should not, you shouldn't um, marry foreign women. You know, then they had statutes for the priests. When they went into the Holy of Holies, they had a certain way, a procedure, directions, instructions on how to do things. So they had these statutes. The, the people didn't follow all the statutes that God had set up for them. They married foreign women. They did other things too. But then he also, like, worshipped these idols. Then they also had covenants, which was a contract that he had made with them. You know, God had made contract with the Abrahamic covenant. He had made the Davidic covenant and so on, the Palestinian covenant. He had, like, quite a few covenants, five to seven, I think. I'm not for sure the number. But they had not followed these covenants. Okay, then also his warnings. He gave them. God always warns you because he says, hey, I can't judge you if I don't tell you what you're not supposed to be doing. So he would tell them, if you do this, you know, I will, you follow me. I'll be your God. You'll be my people. You know, you keep my rules. You know, and I will take care of you, you know. But, you know, he set all these things up. But the people, what? They rejected them all. Right? And so that caused God to be angry with them because they did all this stuff. Over 200 years under these kings, bad leadership, up and down roller coasters, murder, mayhem, all this stuff was going on. And only because God, people decided that they wanted to, they, their lust and their pride, they want to be like the people around them. And so we look at that. Busting. Say that again, sister. I don't. How do you do it? Okay, so, but let's look at some of the different things in the Bible where God was angry. We look at Genesis We look at Genesis 49, 5 and 7, and they're dealing with Levi and uh, Simeon. And they had slew a man, man, and God was angry with them. And what did he do to them? He cursed their, their anger, and he divided and scattered those guys, you know. And so God gets angry when people do things that's not right. Again, we look at Exodus and then uh, Exodus 32, 9 through 14. And God, you know, he uh, states in Exodus 34, 6 that the Lord is merciful, long-suffering, goodness, and truth. Okay? And they say almost the same thing, identical, in numbers. And so what... We're doing this is like God is patient, he's merciful, he's long-suffering, he's good, and he tells you the truth. Now, we look at our lesson today, and he went through this for 200 years, and even before those 200 years, he had still been going through this over and over. So finally, their rejection has brought God's anger upon them. And so it's time for him to just go ahead, hey, they sold themselves over to temporary satisfaction, like the one brother sold himself over for the hot, hot stew that his brother made, <laughs> you know, Jacob and Esau. And so since... The, 
they had done all these things. He just said, oh, okay, well, that's it. So then we come to the question on page 106 where it says, what parallels do you see in the practice of ancient Israel and what people do today? What parallel today in ancient Israel? And the other question, which of today's cultural acceptable actions do you think are actually evil in the Lord's sight? I started off with <laughs> with the um, question ahead of time, so I guess I'll finish it. <laughs> uh, I'll take the first part uh, where um, they uh, the practice uh, that Israel uh, did was one disobeyed God's word in verse uh, 14 and 15, but they did not listen and were stiff-necked as their fathers, and and it goes on to explain. The second was they sought guidance from the uh, divination and the sorcerers and the uh, psychics and all those uh, things, uh, which was an abomination against to God. And then uh, in verse 16, they made uh, molten images uh, you know, the uh, calf, like they did uh, with uh, Moses. Uh, and uh, they, as we said before, they ignored the prophets. So those were some of the things I saw. And and as I mentioned today, uh, uh, it's no different in a way because, again, I mentioned the fact that we still, uh, people are still seeking uh, the uh, the psychics and the uh, Ouija boards and the uh, again just right around me uh, there are uh, psychic signs that you can go in and I have had people to tell me oh why don't you go uh, to they call some of them spiritual doctors mm. that was like what and then. Um, we today uh, believe in, uh, in which they teach in the schools, evolution. On the TV, when you see documentaries about uh, God's creation, uh, they end up um, giving credit to evolution. And also the Big Bang Theory. Uh, and th- these are things that have having been taught and still being taught in schools. Uh, also, we worship money and power, pleasure today. So uh, I see this as not being different idols of money and all today. Yeah, I, I see one thing that uh, that uh, the church has, and that's, uh, fraternities and sororities and organizations. Mm. There are some secret organizations that uh, I don't think God is pleased with if you're going to be on his side. Uh, because you have to take an oath in these organizations and you become uh, focused on the organization, although you have one foot in the church and the other foot is in the world. So <clears throat> I see that taking place in a lot of, and I'm not talking about just people, I'm talking about believers. Um, can I um, uh, give an example of that? Sure. Uh, and uh, one of uh, former church that I belong to, There was a deacon, an elderly deacon, and there was a younger deacon. So the younger deacon confronted the elderly deacon because he had a, uh, 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 what do you call it, mason? Is it the mason's um, ring on? 
Uh, and so the younger deacon confronted him that uh, that was against God's uh, and that you should not be uh, a part of, of these Masons. So he rebelled a bit, but however, the deacon uh, reconsidered uh, and uh, eventually he denounced the Masons and got rid of the ring. Amen. And this was actual, for real. But help me to say that we have to stand up sometimes. You know, and and not just let things slide. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the uh, yeah, that's right. You're supposed to come over and confront folks with situation when you see them going down the wrong path. Uh huh. That's part of our watching duties. M- Mr. Joe, I hope I hope we're not confusing a person taking an oath to the Constitution as something. Uh, Sinister. Okay. I, think, I hope. I, I, think I hope that. I hope that's not what we're saying. No, I think what we're saying is when you take uh, a pledge to these uh, other lying uh, organizations, like she used, like Masons, and then there's other fraternities and clubs and different things, like when you join the Elks Club or. Legion, American Legion Club, or any of these type things, uh, Shriners and all those, you take oaths into these different organizations. But I see what you're saying, that, like, you do take an oath when you, like, when you join in the military, you make an oath, right, to pledge and serve. So uh, I think that uh, in the, in the, in the uh, Masons and Shriners and all these others is really deeper than an oath that they do it's it's real deep uh and uh is uh i think it's more than just oath uh they have to do some uh blood cutting and bloodletting and all the other stuff and allegiance to the what the wizard or whoever he is uh who claims to be god uh jesus christ and all of that now, what about this second half? Which of today's cultural acceptable actions do you think are actually evil in the Lord's sight? You're saying well, you you well, you, I, you, I, I, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, go no, ahead. No, no, no. I I am a Mason, and I, and I would be glad to sit down with anybody on the call anytime to defend. Any organization that I belong to, I belong to a Greek organization. We have secrets, certainly we, we do. So do the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. But, again, I would love to sit down with you um, at any time because it was the Masons who brought this country to be where it is now. Had it not been for the Masons, we wouldn't have a country. It's called the United States of America. But, anyway, I will diverse. Um, but when we talk about things, we talk about a whole lot of leaders. Now, a lot of us are conservatives on the call evangelical Christians, as a teenager who went off to school in college, there was a president who, who we rejected who was a very, very kind Christian man, even a such school teacher. His name was Jimmy Carter. But we picked a president, we, not me, but as a country, we picked a man who was an actor who rode on a big horse. They called him Ronald Reagan. And he came in, and he had all time. As he, God bless him and his soul. His wife brought soothsayers into the White House, uh, people who were reading the stars openly, openly. And we still say, oh, he was the greatest president of all time. And here we are reading in Scripture right now saying these people should not be in charge of anything who read, who read tea leaves and all these things. That was happening in the United States of America. Her name was Nancy Reagan. And you can and you can check it, but that's okay. And then now we have people saying we're going to reject this president who we have now. We want the guy who stole all the money and and did God only knows what solace. But again, that's what we do. We're not perfect, but we follow evil people sometimes. And I'm not calling anybody evil because nobody's perfect. But I'm saying 
we as a society, we get to a point where we just start to believe anything instead of following and reading for ourselves. And that's all I want to say. Um, be careful who we put in leadership positions as well. Um, and, and trust and believe. One of my favorite pastors at, a, at First Baptist Church of Suitland was a 32nd degree Mason. His name was Reverend Ta- Taylor. So, again, just be careful. Um, you know, and I'm not saying he was perfect, but I certainly believe he was a Christian man, and I believe he is in heaven right now. But we do have to we have to keep people accountable, and we have to follow because it's easy to get off track with different organizations or anything else if you worship it more than you worship the Lord. Amen. And so that is the thing that how do we look at this thing? Like like you say, America was built on Masons and things like that. Uh, put America in power, power for certain reasons. God put these people in positions, all the ones that you named. You know, it, everything is done through the will. The people voted for it, but, like, God is ultimately in control. And so then as we read in these scriptures that, you know, nothing can fill the spiritual void in us apart from God himself. And so a lot of folks are looking to these different leaders trying to fill their spiritual voids, but they have to understand that you have to have that relationship with Christ Jesus, the uh, eternal and truth and the real healer of all of us and the Savior as well, the eternal Savior. So, I mean, we have to, there's a lot of things, but like we have this, like you say, we have a spiritual compass, right? And it should be pointing us to eternity with God. And so, let's look at uh, the Excuse next. me, man. Hello, everybody. Hello. I think churches have gotten so far away from teaching God's word, the truth of his mm-hmm. word, and his love. <laughs> Therefore, when people get into different organizations and gangs, which they are the same thing, they're looking for support, they are looking for love, looking for acceptance by the other people, instead of looking towards God and what his word says, you have to really seek, read the word and know what he says. He says, don't do this, because there are so many people today that, as it says, they are worshiping idols. You see many who have Buddhas, and they have temples, and we allow it because nobody's preaching against it. They don't Mm -hmm. want to offend the person. They say we don't want to start any arguments. But what does God's word say? Do not accept them, but you have to teach them in love why God doesn't want that. And, yes, he is in control, but... Given the believer the authority to bind up the works of Satan, which is what it is. And people are confused because that's what the enemy does. He binds the eyes of people so because he doesn't want you to know the truth. That's Amen. All right. That's right, because we... You know, the Satan, he's out there trying to deceive us and lead us off, but we have to not pervert. People have to be taught. People have to study, you know, to show yourself approved. You have to study to know what God wants you to do. You know, you can't right. just pick up the Bible. You can't expect the pastor to give you a great sermon, and then you got insight to do it for yourself. You have to learn to walk the walk. Our, our, our whole thing starts off with says God holds all people accountable for their sins, you know, and nobody else can't. We have to, if you're going to be accountable, you're accountable for reading and knowing yourself. After Jesus Christ came into your life, now you have to grow in him. Your responsibility is continuously growing, with praying without seeking, seeking that kingdom uh, always, you know, continually. But when we're going to go over to remove, but before we go to remove, let's find out why, let's examine the cross references to gain deeper insight 
on page 107. And it tells us, uh, look at 2 Kings chapter 17, 7 through 20, that God's people ignored or rejected at least three Bible commands that people rejected. Consider why the people might have strayed from God's command and think of reason God might have given these particular commands. What are the benefits that comes through obeying God or the demand that come from ignoring, the dangers, I'm sorry, that come from the ignoring him? So as I looked at Second Kings 17, chapter 17, verse 3, it says, Worship no other gods. Deuteronomy says, and Deut- Deuteronomy says, relating to that is, uh, Deuteronomy 5, 8 says, no graven images. Don't bow down to them, you know. And then and they're building high places and pillars and serving idols. Those are three things that God say you shouldn't do. And then he says, hey, in Deuteronomy 6, 14, God say, follow God. Don't follow the gods of the people around you. You know, don't be led astray with the people around you. They might have their high places. They're worshiping these pillars and making these molten images. Don't do like them. And then, and I think even in chapter 17, in our our lesson today, chapter 17, verse 35, it states that, uh, where here it is right here, it says, with whom the Lord has made a covenant and chartered them, saying, ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourself to them, nor serve them, nor uh, sacrifice to them. And he closes out the chapter with saying, so these nations feared the Lord, and serve their graven images, both their children and their children's children did follow after, and so they did to this day. And so they knew, these people knew the truth, they knew God, but they still did what they wanted. They feared God, but they still worshiped fake gods. And so when we go into remove, I would just... I said, examine the cross-references right there. So when we go into this remove, this is why the cross-reference, I did that first. For that when we read this, pay attention to what happens here, Brother Betts. You turned your speaker off. Okay, there we go. Remove. 2 Kings 17, verses 18 through 20. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he removed them from his presence. Only the tribe of Judah remained. Even Judah did not keep the commands of the Lord their God, but lived according to the custom Israel had practiced. For the Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel, punished them, and handed them over to plunderers, until he had banished them from his presence. Lord, had a pleasure to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word in Second Kings chapter 17, verses 18 through 20. So how, does, how do we reconcile the fact that God's faithful love or mercy endures forever with his being a God who judges his people. How is his punishment an expression of his faithful love? <laughs> well, we're, we're uh, reminded all throughout Scripture that, you know, as even his, his people would get off track and get way off track, but he was reeling back in. Now, that doesn't mean that there wasn't consequences in everything that we'd say and do. Obviously, we live in a very sick society. We live in a very sick nation right now. Um, But yet he still reels us back in because he loves us. His love is is forever. 
he has no end to his mercy and his grace. However, that doesn't mean that he's not going to punish us at some point. Or he might say, I had enough of this now, you know, and, but he brings us back or he saves a remnant of, uh, of people who, who bring back ones who are serving him. And certainly um, this is throughout Scripture. If you read it from the beginning of the Bible to the end, you know, he still has a saving grace through his son Jesus to Christ. So that would be um, what I would say to, to that question. Yeah, I would like to uh, to admit because God's a loving God and He has patience and mercy. This is a long time that He's put up with this. Uh, uh, these these sins. Uh, and I think a lot of times we think because nothing has happened, nothing will happen. But I think the key to the whole thing is you cannot go on with repeated sin for years. Eventually, God is going to get angry. And when he gets angry, for these people, they had compromised his word for so long until now he's angry and he does something uh, pretty extreme. He removes them from their land. Now, they don't expect this because this hasn't happened before because they feel that they are his chosen people. But, it's like I said, I had fun with this last night and there's some, uh, there's about four verses here. One, uh, two is New Testament, two is Old Testament. The guy that came to Job, uh, uh, the friend, he says, according to what I have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble harvest it. Mm-hmm. And that's normally what happened. The same thing happened here. They're about to harvest the trouble that they sow. Uh You've got Hosea uh, 8, 7. For they sow the wind and they reap the whirlwind. That's intensity, violent situation. That's what these people are about to do. But just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And those people that 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 see the Old Testament and just read the Old Testament, look at what it says in the New Testament in Galatians. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's what's happening now. These people went from compromising God's word to captivity. And that's what happens to us if we keep repeatedly doing the same sin over and over. And we know better. If you know better, you do better. But if you know better and you keep being disobedient, this is what happens. And I think it was best said in the book right here where it said they worship worthless idols. And what happened to them? They became worthless. And, I mean, and uh, so... I think we're running out of time. I know we are, but here's uh, to close this out. It's applying the text. God called people to repent and turn to him. Rejecting God's God leads to greater folly and evil. Judgment awaits all who reject God. And so here's one thing that we must do, not I must do. Are there sins that have created a barrier between me and God? And what can I do to make things personal and in my spiritual life with God? How can I make things work? How can I, what, take care of these barriers? 
Are these the high places that we're talking about, these barriers? So let's take a look at that. Is there anything in our lives that's creating the barrier? You know, and like God, you know, unconfessed sin or anything. So anyway, with that, I think uh, Deacon Betts, I think you can pray us out, and we're going to go next week into the 12th. We only got two more uh, weeks in this book, and the new books should be in now, so we could start planning on going up on Tuesdays and picking up the new Sunday school books, getting ready for the next section that we're going to be going into. So next week we're going to say, God hears. God, listen to the honest and humble prayer of his followers. And just like the brother said before we close out, don't be deceived. God ain't marked and he's going to take, I don't know how he said it, but you heard him. You reap what you're going to sow. Okay, go ahead, brother. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this gathering today. We thank you, Lord, for participation for everyone who are on the line, Father. And we just pray, Father, that uh, this lesson will help us to be mindful of what we need to do, Father, to, to walk in your way and to stay near to you, Father, and to follow your rules and the guidance for our lives, Father. We see, Father, from the past, Father, what happens when we don't stay in the right way. So we just hope, Father, that we have uh, been reminded that we need to stay close to you, Father, follow your guidelines for our lives, Father, and live for you instead of for mankind. Bless us as we go, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen.